Now here's a, a snippet of the installation UI. Now, as, as I mentioned, the IP that you gave to ESX, we'll run a quick API query. We'll say, hey, what's the, the IP here? And we'll pre-populate as much of this for you as we can. Um, however, you are gonna need to give it a new name because you'll have your VM name, Sky 8.1 or what have you. Um, and But you're also going to need to give it another appliance name. So you know, Sky Prod, Sky DR, Sky Test and Dev. Uh, this is, it can be the same name that you gave it in VS, vSphere, but you do need to name it twice. We need two distinct name entries here. Um, we're also gonna you know, fill in our, our normal type of VM stuff. That's gonna be the DNS, the subnet, the gateway, um, we are going to use an NTP server. I would suggest to always use NTP um, and then select a time zone. Now, if you are uh, perhaps attending and you work for an MSP, um, some MSPs will keep all of their hardware running in the time zone for which the hardware is located. So if all the hardware is in London, we're all at GMT, zero offset. Um, we actually leverage the offset method here. We don't assign a time zone. We leave everything at GMT and then we assign a time zone offset. So if you assign your offset here, you can keep the VM time in sync with your data center. However, let's say uh, we're in London again and we have a customer in Singapore. You can use the offset here so that Sky will display everything in your end user's local time while preserving the VM on the time for the data center it lives in in London. So the VM will have London time, the Sky appliance itself will be running on Singapore time. And now we're going to select the install environment. Um, now this could be AWS, Hyper-V, VMware, Azure, Google, uh, and th there's in fact, there, there's even more than, than what's in my screenshot here. Um, because so many people use VMware, I've stuck with VMware for today. However, all of these principles, uh, don't apply so much for the cloud because you're not gonna have as much control over that environment. It's not like you could just walk over to Google's data center and say, hey, let me start moving these wires and the switch to see if I can improve stuff. Uh, however, for your Hyper-V, your VMware, um, or if you've got it and you're actually hosting your own Oracle public cloud in your own data center, you can do all of the things that I've described to you here today. Okay, so if this is going to be a production installation, meaning you're gonna start onboarding data that you need to protect, and you need to be accountable for, I'm gonna ask you to stop at this point. This is the point where we're going to need to get a license key. Now, just kind of an aside, earlier in this presentation, I said, you'll go ahead and install a test VM. You can actually install five terabytes Sky with no license for 30 days. So if you wanted to install your Debian or your Windows with PowerShell to do some of your initial specking, do that. However, if you've got the cycles where we're gonna give you Sky five terabytes free for 30 days, I would maybe just install that five terabyte Sky and I'd run some jobs. We've got some canned SLAs. Uh, we'll do a quick discovery, grab one or two things, run some backups, run some dedupes, and then use IO Analyzer to analyze the performance of this test Sky appliance. Again, five terabytes, 30 days, no fee. Great opportunity to, to kind of pre-test your environment. Okay, so now our test is over. We want to go, we want a 30 terabyte pool. We're ready to go into production. We've done all of our testing. We're happy. We're convinced that everything's going to work exactly the way we want it to. In the installer pane, you can see in this left-hand picture indicated by an arrow, this is the UUID of the VM that will be hosting Sky. Now you'll be actually be able to go into the VMX config for that VM, and it's the same exact number. This is the same UUID that vSphere references the VM with. So you're going to copy that in and you're gonna send a, a mail out to supportedactifio.com. Let them know the total size of the license you need. Let them know whether or not you need encryption. And then they will mail you a license key back. And when you get it back, very simply copy it and paste it here. You can see there our license field. It's got a little blurb about the evaluation license giving you five terabytes for 30 days. Just paste it right on top of that. Click validate license. Um, make sure that you, you clean your input when you copy it and paste it. If you copy a space at the end, you, it could say that it doesn't validate. Just make sure you don't have any leading or trailing spaces. Uh, and then we're gonna create an admin password. This is going to be the password that you use to log into the Sky UI. Um, if you're using password authentication for SSH, same password. Once we create the password, we're pretty well done. 
we're just going to add some disks and then we're going to be ready to go so once you get onto the next screen this is our storage ui for installation here now you can see over here on the right those are the disks that we created earlier that's our our 10 gigabyte snap pool our 400 gigabyte primary pool and our one terabyte dedupe pool um, and adding these to your sky instance could not possibly be easier you just simply grab it and you can kind of see here on the bottom and you just drag it you just grab the the sdb sdd sdc whichever storage device you like and you just dr drag it into the pool that you want to assign it to uh, we can do multiple disks into the same pool um, and really it's all just a drag and drop if for some reason you forgot to add disks maybe you carved them out but you didn't assign them to the vm um, not a big deal minimize your browser go back into vmware get those disks attached uh, maybe you needed to resize one do anything you need to do with the storage on the back end get it all just right and then come back over to the installer up here we can see a little refresh icon when you hit this, we're going to make another API query to the vSphere server. And we're going to say, tell me about the disks that you see being assigned to this VM. At that point, this list over here on the right will update to reflect the disk that you've just added in vSphere. And again, you just grab your disk, drag it over where you want it, drop it. And then when we're done, we're going to click validate. And that's just going to validate your storage. And that about wraps up our installation. Now, what if validate fails? Uh, validation checks three things. It's going to check to make sure that you have the proper amount of memory and CPU to launch this VM. Now it's not going to check your reservations. It's not going to check to see if you're overbooked. It's just going to say, you've given me X and X should be enough for me to do my job. So we still need to be diligent. This unfortunately isn't going to go in and do all this performance testing to make sure we're using the right VLAN, the right interface, the right disk. Uh, this is pre pretty binary. Uh, is CPU equal to or greater than X? Yes, okay, then we're validated. Now, if you chose the wrong infrastructure, um, maybe you're installing on VMware, but you're moving a little quick through that dropdown, you clicked AWS by mistake, uh, we're gonna tell you we, we can't install the AWS because we're not connected to it. This is a, v a VMware config. Or you didn't add the right disks. Um, maybe you meant to add a 400 gigabyte primary pool, um, and just through an error, you entered 40 instead of 400. Um, and all of these things, we can just stop where we are. We'll tell you what's wrong. Your CPU is wrong. Your memory is wrong. Your disk is wrong. You're trying to install to Azure Cloud, but we're using a Hyper-V config. Um, at that point, we can just back up, go into vSphere, fix the things that we need to complete, basically restart. All, all of the things that you filled out in the installation will stay populated. We'll just do it again with the things set right. Just go back, change it from AWS to v VMware, um, and then we'll click complete installation. We're going to get one reboot, and Sky will come back online ready to go to work. And that's the entire installation of Sky. And as I said, it takes it, it took me about twice as long to explain it as it actually takes to do it. Thank you for joining us for another YouTube Tech Tip video. If you like the content you're seeing on this channel, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you will be alerted to any future content.